So in this lesson, we're going to start section 8.2, which is going to introduce us to hypothesis testing for a mean. So in all the examples we do today, you'll notice that they all deal with claims about averages. Now, there are two different tests that are used for means or averages, and the one we're going to learn about first is called the Z-test. So going to the notes, uh, the Z-test is used whenever sigma is known. Okay, remember sigma just stands for the population standard deviation. So if they give you that specifically in the question, then you know that you're going to use a z-test. Now in every hypothesis test, we're going to have to find a test value to compare with the critical value. And every test value formula is different, but in general, it's what I have written here. So it's the observed value minus the expected value over the standard error. So specifically, the test value formula for the z-test is going to be z equals, and then it's x bar minus mu all over sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so that's important. You definitely want to um, keep that formula near you when you're doing these problems. Okay, and everything stands for uh, what you think it stands for. So x bar is still our sample mean. Mu is still the population mean. Um, sigma, of course, is the population standard deviation, and then our sample size is n, like normal. Okay, so there are two methods that are both widely used in the world, um, the world of statistics for the z-test, so we are going to learn both of them, um, but today we're just going to focus on the traditional method. So the traditional method has five steps to it. And um, let's go ahead, let's move on to example one, and I'll kind of go through those steps as we do that example. Okay, so example three. Um, it says, in Pennsylvania, the average IQ score is 101.5. The variable is normally distributed, and the population standard deviation is 15. A school superintendent claims that the students in her school district have an IQ higher than the average of 101.5. So she selects a random sample of 30 students and finds that the mean of the test scores for those students is 106.4. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test her claim with a level of significance of 0.05. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go through those steps that were on the previous page there. So step one says that um, we need to state the hypotheses and identify the claim. Okay, so step one, we'll start with the null hypothesis. So remember from our last section, the null hypothesis is the one that always has the equal sign. Okay, so you just have to read through the question, see what they said the average is um, for the population. So that's the 101.5. So we'll say mu equals 101.5. And then the alternative hypothesis, well, you kind of read the question again and look for some key words. So um, it says the school superintendent claims that the students in her district have an IQ higher than the average of 101.5. Okay, so she thinks that uh, mu is going to be greater than 101.5. Okay, so I'm going to label that one as the claim since that is what she is claiming. Okay, step two says that we need to find the critical values. Okay, so the critical values are going to come from those common critical values that were on your notes from last section. So you pretty much need to know two things to get your critical value. Um, you need to know what your level of significance is, so alpha is 0.05, and then you need to know what type of test it is. Okay, so since um, the sign in the alternative is a greater than sign. That tells us that it's going to be a right-tailed test. Okay, so if you just think about like where you would shade on a number line for greater than 101.5, you would shade to the right. So that tells you it's a right-tailed test. Okay, so if you pull out that um, table or just your notes from last section, um, let's see. So just be careful when you pick your critical value. So it's a right tailed, so it's this middle column, alpha is 0.05. So that tells us our critical value is 1.65. Okay, so I'll fill that in for step two. So if you have that table handy, 
it'll definitely help you out because you won't have to like do inverse norm and all of that stuff to get that value. Okay, then step three says to compute the test value. Okay, so we're gonna use that formula that we just wrote down. So Z equals X bar minus mu all over sigma divided by the square root of N. Okay, so X bar is gonna be the sample mean. So the mean from that sample of 30 students, it says was the 106.4. And then we subtract mu, so mu was the 101.5. And then you divide by this um, population standard deviation, which is 15, and divide that by the square root of n. So we'll divide that by the square root of 30 since there were 30 students in the sample. Okay, so if you have your calculator, definitely grab that out now. Um, this is one of those things that students do mess up all the time when they're putting this in their calculator. So when you put this in, what you have to do is put parentheses around the entire numerator and the entire denominator. Okay, so if you wanna pause this video and try it for yourself, um, that would be a good idea. I am gonna pop uh, my calculator screen up on here for you. So in case you're not getting the right answer, you can kind of compare your screen with mine down here. Um, and see maybe if you messed up the parentheses at all. So just make sure you have parentheses around the numerator, then do the divide sign, and then parentheses around your entire denominator. Okay, and what you should get is what's on there. So 1.789 um, and so on. Z values, remember we always round to two decimal places. So I'll round that to 1.79. Okay, so that's our test value there. Step four um, is to make the decision to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so for step four, what you wanna do uh, is draw like a normal distribution curve. So just like a bell curve, if it's not already drawn for you. Uh, and then we wanna figure out what our rejection region is. So put your critical value on that bell curve, so 1.65. So I know it's gotta be on the right side of zero because 1.65 is larger than zero. And then since this is a right tailed test, my rejection region is gonna be in this area to the right. So on the right side of that critical value. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see whether our test value falls into that rejection region. So our test value was the 1.79. So if I kind of mark that on my number line, I can see that 1.79 does fall into the rejection region. Okay, so 1.79 is in the rejection region. Now, if it falls into the rejection region, then that tells you that your decision should be to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so you definitely wanna write that down. That's our decision that we are rejecting the null. And then step five, we're just gonna summarize our results. Okay, so that's where we're gonna use that summary table from the last section. So we have to look at two things. You have to look at where the claim is located. So our claim was in the alternative hypothesis. So that's gonna be the second column here. And then our decision was to reject the null. So we rejected H naught. So for reject H naught with the claim in the alternative, we're gonna say that there is enough evidence to support the claim. So down here in step five, we'll say there is enough evidence to support the claim that the IQ of the students is higher than the state average IQ. Okay, 